Hi everybody, this is Professor Tannenbaum. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at the sections of a scholarly research article. Now depending on which journal an article is published, you may find that the article is formatted slightly differently and labels are slightly different. But generally speaking, these are the sections that you will find in every research article in psychology, but in other scientific fields as well. And so they're almost always going to start with an abstract, which is a one paragraph overview of what this study is all about. So here we have an example of one from a psychology journal. This is the author telling you what they think are the highlights from their article. So obviously you don't want to rely solely on this, but it does give you a good overview. And I always recommend that you read this before you jump into the article itself, because this gives you a sense of where are we going with all of this and what should I be looking for? The meat of the article itself is going to begin with the introduction. Basically, this is the authors telling you what are we studying and why should you care? So what important question are they asking or what problem are they trying to solve? How does their research build on what's done before? And what are they expecting to find and why? From here, they're going to tell you how they got their data. So who was in their study? What tests or surveys uh, did they use? Is there anything else you need to know about the equipment or about the setup of how they actually collected all of their data? From here, we go to the, res the results method, excuse me, which is the details of the statistical analysis. Now, in this course, I am assuming you do not have a background in statistics. And so I am not expecting you to understand all of the jargon and all of the symbols that they are using. So you may find, for example, something that looks like this. In intro psychology, we both know that you have not learned what F values are or P values or beta values, and that's okay. I do want you to still read this section because you can look for the parts that are explaining the results in words, but you don't have to worry about the statistics. If you see a chart like this one, again, don't worry about it. I'm not expecting you to be able to interpret something like this. The only statistics that you do need to be able to understand in this class are correlations and measures of central tendency. So that's the mean, the median, and the mode. The last section in the meat of the article is going to be the discussion. So this is where the researchers are going to wrap everything up. They're going to remind you of what they found, but then talk about the implications of this. Why should we care what they found? What can we do with this information? And because science is always an iterative process, they are generally going to end by telling you about some of the limitations of their research because every study has limitations, no matter how well designed it is. And they're often going to also make suggestions for future research. So these sections together make up the meat of the article, the abstract introduction methods, results, and discussion. You are going to find some other stuff in the article that you do not need to worry about for this assignment. So when you are summarizing the article, you do not need to include the author's names, their institutional affiliations, publication data, that sort of thing. You also do not need to include anything from the reference list. You would only be citing these sources if you had read them yourself, which you are not required to do in this course. So that's it. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask and I hope you have a great day.